It's a real pleasure to have you join us for the Suncoast Campaign for Grade Level Reading 2020 Manatee County Update Meeting. My name is Beth Duda. I'm director of the Suncoast Campaign for Grade Level Reading, working with the Patterson Foundation. We're encouraging you to use the chat function to say hello to each other and to share comments during the webinar. Later on, if there's time, Bronwyn Baytal and I will be using the Q&A box to take any questions that you might have. Now, traditionally, this annual gathering has taken place in person, 300 people strong at Michael's on East with a huge breakfast buffet. But in order for all of us to stay safe, we're grateful that you're willing to participate virtually. I hope the loss of all you can eat bacon is made up for the reduction in your commute this morning. And um, can you can go ahead and change the slide, thank you. For those of you who are new to this movement, the Suncoast Campaign for Grade Level Reading is a four county effort in Charlotte, DeSoto, Manatee and Sarasota counties to help all children, especially those from asset limited families succeed in life by ensuring that they can read on grade level by the end of third grade. We're part of a national movement. The national campaign consists of more than 350 communities across the United States, the District of Columbia, Puerto Rico, the US Virgin Islands and Canada, all of us working to ensure our children's success. Children learn to read from birth to third grade. And after third grade, they are expected to be able to read to learn. And our children who are unable to meet that important milestone fall further and further behind, making them up to four times more likely to drop out of high school. Through the critical dimensions of parent and family engagement and health determinants, we focus our work around three pillars school readiness, the zero to five years. Too many children from our asset limited families begin school already behind. And we work to make sure that they are starting on an even playing field. We also focus on chronic absenteeism. Chronic absence is defined as missing 10% or more of the school year. And research has found that one in 10 kindergarten and first grade students nationwide miss nearly a month of school each year. These students can ill afford to lose time, especially in the early years when reading instruction is a central part of the curriculum. And we look at summer learning loss in grades K through three. The average child growing up in an asset limited family can lose as much as three months of reading skills over the summer. That means by the end of fifth grade, they can be nearly three grade levels behind their peers. We take a regional approach to this work. The Patterson Foundation functions as a regional accelerator with a lead partner in each of our four communities focusing on county specific work. In Manatee County, our lead partner is United Way Suncoast. All of us work with individuals, businesses, nonprofits, government, libraries, schools, and the media in order to build and strengthen this regional movement. So that gives you the uh, basics about the Suncoast campaign for grade level reading. Now we wanna find out a little bit about you. Our Zoom administrator for today is Abby Rowland. She's one of the fellows with the Patterson Foundation and she's going to post some poll questions for you. And we look forward to your answer. Abby, go ahead with the first question. So we'd like to just know the role that you play in our community. You can select as many of these categories as are applicable to you. And Abby, can you show us the results as they're coming in? Yes, we have about 50 people out of, we're getting there, about 82% have voted. Okay, with a, to about 90%, will you share the results with us? 
Yes. Great. Got a widespread here of different roles. Okay. Yep. Okay. Wow. I love that champion of children is our number one answer um, today. And we appreciate all of you being with us and are very appreciative for all the variety of roles that you play in our community. Abby, will you do the next poll question for us? This one's a little more fun. It's about book characters. Which of these book characters do you most strongly identify with? Curious George, Harry Potter, Winnie the Pooh, Pippi Longstocking, Charlotte A. Cavetica, that's Charlotte from Charlotte's Web, or Ramona the Pest? We're looking forward to your answers. I think you can only choose one of these today. So you're gonna to have to pick the one that fits you best. Got a couple that are really standing out so far. Okay, I'll give you another moment. All righty. Wow, Pippi Longstocking, number one answer, who knew? That's great, I love Curious George um, being right up there with 25% and, and not too many pests this morning. I guess that's a good thing, right? And um, Abby, our final uh, poll question for this segment, please. So how long have you been awake so far today? Pick your closest option. Three hours or more, two hours, one hour, 30 minutes, or I just rolled out of bed. So we'll give Bronwyn and I a, a good um, indication on how slow we should talk to you this morning. A lot of people have been awake for a while today. All right, a few more seconds. Wow, we do have some early risers this morning. Excellent. Well, thank you all for participating. We'll have a few more poll questions for you throughout the morning. And um, we are going to move on to our, our next slide. We're going to share some good news with you uh, this morning. Each year, the National Campaign for Grade Level Reading awards communities making measurable progress with something they call Pace Setter Awards or Pace Setter Honors. And we recently found out the Pace Setter results for 2019. We are thrilled that the Suncoast Campaign for Grade Level Reading was awarded six Pace Setter Honors for our work in 2019 in five different categories. And we have um, a video we're going to play for you that highlights uh, all of the categories we received those honors in. So whenever you are ready, here we go. Every year since its inception in 2015, the Suncoast Campaign for Grade Level Reading has earned Pace Setter Honors from the National Campaign for Grade Level Reading. This recognition has been based on the strength, innovation, and measurable results of efforts throughout the Suncoast to assure the success of our children. The National Pace Setter Honors for 2019 were recently awarded, and once again, the Suncoast Campaign for Grade Level Reading was recognized. This time, with six honors in five categories. The Suncoast Campaign for Grade Level Reading received the Big Tent Collaboration Pace Setter Honor for communications. Families and partners stayed connected, energized, and informed through a frequently updated website, two monthly newsletters, hundreds of blog posts, active Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram accounts, and a range of videos on YouTube. All of these communication tools help to build and maintain a thriving regional movement. 
because of the Sun Coast campaign for grade level reading, our four county region, we were able to still connect with one another, still learn from one another, and then also be very nimble in how we served our community of parents and children and stakeholders. For the Pace Center category, Driving with Data, the Sun Coast campaign received an award for funding data management technicians. Hi, my name is Carmel today, Director of Elementary. Elementary Learning for Charlotte County Public Schools. I am here to recognize the Pace Center Award that the campaign. Sorry, all we're having a little bit of a technical difficulty. Just give us one second, please. Abby, yes. I think if you let um, me share my screen, okay. I think I can perhaps help with this. Um, let me, okay. Because of the Sun Coast Campaign for Grade Level Reading, our four county region, we were able to still connect with one another, still learn from one another, and then also be very nimble in how we served our community of parents and children and stakeholders. For the Pace Center category, Driving with Data, the Sun Coast Campaign received an award for funding data management technicians. Hi, my name is Carmel today, Director of Elementary Learning for Charlotte County Public Schools. I am here to recognize the Pace Center Award that the campaign received for the psychometrician positions in three of our larger districts. That position has proven to be invaluable. Susan Moore, who is in that position and for Charlotte County Public Schools, pulls data anytime that we need it. And it has become a win-win not only for the campaign, but as well for the schools in our district. Our principals are able to use that data. We're able to benefit by understanding who would students in our district may need a little bit more intensive intervention in the area of reading instruction and we're able to provide. I've waited for things like this for over 25 years and thank you for allowing this. For philanthropic engagement and leadership, a Pace Center honor for the Community Foundation of Sarasota County attending to students' mental health needs. Hi, I'm Kirsten Russell. As part of the Suncoast Campaign for Grade Level Reading, we are honored to be recognized as a pace setter for our work with mental health therapists in elementary schools. One out of five youth experience mental health issues, and we know that only half of those children actually get their needs met. We are so thrilled that this drove an innovative partnership between Sarasota County Schools and the Florida Center for Early Childhood. We have 23 schools that have mental health therapists on site, meeting the emotional, behavioral, and mental health needs of our children. Grade level reading, it's not just about literacy tools. It's about meeting the needs of the whole child, helping them reach their full potential. And this is a key component of doing that. So we thank our partners and we thank the community for recognizing this need and ultimately meeting the needs of our children. 93% of the students receiving these services are having a measurable impact. Thank you, National Campaign, for recognizing the work in this community and to the Suncoast Campaign for Grade Level Reading and the Patterson Foundation for the collaborative approach in this region. In the category of summer and after school, 
a Pace Center honor to the Suncoast Summer Reading Challenge. Boys and Girls Clubs, Parks and Recreation Sites, YMCAs, school districts, church groups, community centers, and businesses encouraged thousands of children to take on the challenge of reading more than six books over the summer months. I read 56. This summer I read 81 books. Each participating location held at least two events each week designed to inspire children to complete the challenge. And making this summer reading challenge even more successful was a very special person who made surprise appearances. Introducing the Fina Story. We can tell that the students that come back um, after having been in this program and having read all summer long, we can see a huge difference. Total books read? An astounding 198,570 books. Reading is the key to succeeding. Excellent. In the category of parent success, the Suncoast Campaign for Grade Level Reading received two honors. First, for increasing children's success by supporting parents' aspirations. Hi, I'm Nicole Light, Education Officer for the Community Foundation of Sarasota County. We are the Sarasota lead for the Suncoast Campaign for Grade Level Reading. We are thrilled to receive a Pace Center Award for our Parent Success Program. We believe that the secret sauce to our Parent Success Program is our Parent Education Navigator, Mary Tucker. She works one-on-one -on -one with every single parent that's gone through our Parent Success Program. This high human touch is what leads these parents from their aspirations to their actions. We asked all the parents that have gone through this program, what was the impact on their children? And by and large, all of the parents said that they were, saw their children watching them be excited about learning something new and achieving their own success, which of course will lead to the children's success as well. And also in the category of parent success, soaring above poverty and isolation. It is amazing to be honored by this campaign for grade level reading as a pace setter. Soar and Thor has been serving our families for over four years now, and because of COVID, we've had to transition to a drive through Originally, our Soar and Thor event takes place downtown. We've collaborated with the Central Library, the Art Center of Manatee, and the Bishop Museum. They are all fabulous partners, but unfortunately, we cannot have lots and lots of families in, in those places right now. Um, we cause traffic jams downtown. So we have moved to the DeSoto Square Mall where we can easily accommodate 350 cars. We still have the same instructional resources and materials. This is a bag with a whole bunch of supplies in it. We still partner with all the same agencies. We provide the same services. Our teachers are talking to the families as they drive by. They stop and get a little lesson. This is a gopher tortoise, all right? And gopher tortoises are our diggers. They are amazing at diggers. They can dig the length of a football field and the height of a full-grown man, so about six foot. They're modeling how to use the materials and resources. They're talking about needs in case there are any needs that we can accommodate. Information about COVID. This is uh, for two adults, and these are children masks, okay? In COVID, this is the best we can do. We wear masks, and we still do our work. Hey, it's great. It's great for the kids. It's something to do, and they can't do nothing right now. This is amazing. I think it's such a good idea. This is amazing. Thank you. The Suncoast Campaign for Grade Level Reading is proud to be one of just a handful of communities who have received Pace Center honors out of the 350 communities across the United States. These honors are really an affirmation of all the hard work that's been going on in our four county region. We are so grateful for everything everyone has done so far, but we still have a lot of work ahead of us. We still have many children who have not reached the success we know they deserve. So we're asking you to continue to support us and continue to support the children in our region who need our help. Well, thank you. I know it's kind of exciting. I, I'm uh, thrilled that uh, we 
won the awards, but as I said in the video, we still have uh, work left to do. Um, before we move on to our next topic, I believe we have another poll question. Is that true, Abby? Yes, we do. Great. Okay, launching now. So um, we'd like to know which of these activities uh, do you think helps to build a baby's brain? Talking to them, narrating what you're doing, talking to them using baby talk, singing to them, reading to them, playing with them, comforting them, or making eye contact. And can they choose more than one, Abby? I don't believe on this one they can. Well, then that's a trick question because the answer is all of them, all of those activities that are listed do help build a, a baby's brain. And I, I see that many of you had uh, difficulty because, oh, all of the above, 85%. I, I guess I just didn't see that uh, that was one of the options. So we encourage you to continue to do all of these things with the babies that um, you know, and we all will continue uh, to advocate and make sure that parents know that the talking, reading, and singing to their babies is one of the most important things they can do to build brains. We can go to the next slide, Abby. So as you saw in the pay setting, setter um, video, the Suncoast campaign campaign for grade level reading has had a robust summer learning program in place called the Suncoast Campaign uh, for Grade Level Reading Summer Reading Challenge. And we had great plans in place to grow that program in the summer of 2020. And then the pandemic hit and we were faced with a lot of questions. Uh, we didn't know how we would be able to keep our work uh, family and child-centered, weren't certain how we could continue to support summer camps. Um, for a while in March and April, we weren't even sure if there would be summer camps. We wanted to make sure that we could get high quality reading material into the hands of children, making sure that we were easing the pressure and stress that parents were experiencing. And we felt very strongly that our families that were struggling prior to the pandemic were probably feeling like they were in the middle of a riptide. So it was important for us to come up with a way that we could help our families and children in one of the most unpredictable summers uh, we experienced. And this next uh, video will show you how we did that. With our children. And when our children are successful, our communities are gonna be stronger. In the spring of 2020, as the COVID virus disrupted schools, after school programs, and plans for summer learning, the Sun Coast Campaign for Grade Level Reading sprang into action to give children and their families motivation to keep reading by developing a program called, This Book Is Cool. This book is cool. This book is cool. Webisodes of This Book is Cool are created for grade levels pre-K through third grade. Each webisode features a high quality book, a special guest from the community, a focus on vocabulary building, and a creative and fun activity for the children that they can do with their families. There were 100 webisodes featuring 100 Zoom guests. We have a special guest to talk to us today about why he thinks this book is cool.
children and families who participated directly from their homes received 20 books over the course of the summer. Books were picked up, mailed, and in some cases, hand-delivered to the children. Keeps them engaged to this summer and it keeps them excited about reading and it gives us like little activities. We love reading the story and then doing the craft. I think the favorite thing is the activities that they can do also after they read them or watching the video that someone else also enjoys the book. Thank you so much for bringing it to the Boys and Girls Club. All of our clubs love it and truly, truly appreciate all the you And this is a magnificent way to connect with families and kids to spark that love and affirmation of reading. This book is cool. This book is cool. This book is cool. people who work with the Patterson Foundation come from a place of yes with excellence. As a result of these efforts, more than 1,100 children participated in This Book is Cool from their homes, with 4,100 more participating through their summer providers. That's a total of 5,302 children, and together they read 94,383 books. Cool! Summer is over. But the This Book is Cool webisodes will continue to have an impact in the Suncoast region and beyond. You can go to the next slide, Abby. We are very grateful uh, to Bill Wakey for creating the videos and very grateful to everyone who appeared on camera in the videos and in this book is cool. Our results in Manatee County for the summer, we had 13 locations that we were able to receive outcome data. Uh, we have a partnership with our school districts and we were able to get the outcome data for 13 locations. Uh, a total of 798 children in Manatee County who participated in the Summer Reading Challenge. And 589 of those children had no reading skill loss. And next slide, Abby. That's 74% of the children who participated with no reading loss. And in our entire region, we had um, over 4,000 children. We can go to the next slide, Abby who uh, participated and uh, 3,000 of those children showed no reading loss. And next slide. So in the region, 73% of the children who participated this summer had no measurable reading skill loss. It's something that we're uh, extremely excited about. However, we know our work needs to continue because there are those that other 26% uh, of the kids who need our help. It's um, my pleasure now to introduce to you um, the leader of our, our lead partner agency in Manatee County. Uh, Bronwyn Baytal is the Chief Impact Officer with United Way Suncoast for Sarasota, Manatee, and DeSoto counties. And she has done a magnificent job as our lead partner in Manatee County. Take it away, Bronwyn. Thank you very much, Beth. Um, I'm already inspired. Um, so thank you everybody who is here with us today. I'll get right to it. Um, I believe that you see something that you wanna get done. You cannot give up and you cannot give in. That civil rights leader and representative John Lewis, sorry, <laughs> chokes me up um, because it's a powerful statement and a call to action and perseverance as we lead and we act intentionally for equitable access for everyone to create the life they imagine. As our current climate underscores, we continue to bear witness to inequities, bias, and systemic barriers that impede outcomes for many of our community members, especially our children. And for the movement, the Suncoast Campaign for Grade Level Reading to succeed well beyond our lifetimes, every single one of us will need to consider banishing what ego gets in the way what long held traditions and assumptions in order to ensure a more perfect union for our children's future. And although it's not a new concept to invest in early education and grade level reading success, as a result of consistent messaging, the questions and intention 
are no longer should I invest, but how do I invest in the best and the most promising work? What will ensure gains and how do I come alongside of our families, neighbors, early learning centers, schools, and community effectively? And the all important question, how do I know my investment will last, change the future now and for generations? We've been addressing this question in Manatee County and we continue to invest time, energy, thought leadership and ourselves in the systems level approach to generational success ensuring partnerships that thrive well beyond any immediate initiatives or programs and lay a foundation for our future. And we are not giving up and we are not giving in. As we shared last year, our community has come together to create the big plan. Community united for our children's future, focused on 10 schools and their attendance zones with the highest concentration of school children and families in Manatee County. As you recall, in the 17-18 school year, 75% of the third graders in our, our 10 schools did not test as reading on grade level. That's 742 students. In the following year, and during the, the beginnings of the big plan, we did see improvements. And that just goes to show that many of our efforts, in spite of, of coming to this focus, were already on track. Um, however, it showed that we did still need um, some improvement and have a long way to go. And then it's 2020 and we find ourselves in the midst of a pandemic. But I was saying before, and I'm going a little off my script, so bear with me. I was saying before this is that having a focus and a singular intention ensured that this pandemic did not take us, it did not unmoor us from our, our targets. We know where to focus. We know who needs our help and we know how to get there. And although we don't have the specific data that we would have wanted from this first year, we can say that we are arriving because we continue to lay that foundation. And every year we deepen and strengthen how we work together. We continue to have five leadership spanning organizations that require sacrifice and institutional change and a turned outward approach to make this transformational. And it is that trust that allowed us to easily pivot and come together during that pandemic. I think it's important to share, even though it may take a minute, the several key milestones from each of those organizations, because that speaks to that foundation. Manatee County government, they've written grade level reading outcomes into their children's services advisory plan. They've ensured an alignment of resources and our understanding of where opportunities exist and where deserts of opportunities might exist in Manatee County through GIS mapping. They invested in efforts to outcomes for our early learning coalition to allow us to track the success of quality early care through pre-K. They've turned outward in their approach to library services and they've aligned when we came together around the big plan, part of that alignment was their investment in recap zones, racially and ethnic, ethnically centralized areas of poverty which ensure additional resources for our community beyond our schools. And they've invested, interestingly enough, during this, we learned that it's okay for county government to invest in the school district and specific pilot programs to move the movement forward. So thank you for that. Manatee Community Foundation has worked with Manatee County government to ensure results first training and um, focus for both program development and grant making. United Way Suncoast was uh, gratefully invited to join that learning, as well as the majority of our nonprofits in our region, in our uh, area, I'm sorry, Manatee County. So thanks to that leadership, we have common language and common intent. We've, they invested in joint donor and community education, and they worked with community advocates to create funds that aligned with donor and community intention that resulted in funding for SOAR and FOUR and Dive Into Reading and other grade level reading initiatives the school district of Manatee County. From the very beginning, they invested in internal leadership with the freedom to work externally to develop grade level reading strategies and partnerships. They worked with community to create alignment of volunteer efforts. They've turned outward with community conversations and developed the award-winning SOAR and Four. They invested in a community school, Manatee Elementary. They ensured the strategic plan included grade level reading and the big plan. 
telehealth is now available to students thanks in partnership to, to, to a partnership they have with MCR Health in six of our schools of focus. And with an eye on inclusion, they've ensured that communications are in both Spanish and English and easily accessible for our families. Our early learning coalition, and I don't know if Paul is on here, but what a big achievement, but we now have unique identifier numbers for our children in early learning. It's something we talked about for a very long time and he's been a tireless advocate and we have that in Manatee County. Utilize, they utilize the efforts to outcomes. They partnership, the partnership that they have with the school district is now enviable um, in our, our state as they co-create and plan together. And as a result of our town hall meetings last year, they developed a whatever it takes. You'll have to learn more about that later. And United Way Suncoast has realigned our strategic community investments to focus on our central corridor and our children and families who need us the most. And we're grateful for our strategic community partners who are on the next slide and their leadership and expertise. We developed several United Way led initiatives. And when I say United Way led, I mean us together as partners in this community. We do nothing alone. So partnerships like reading rooms where early learning opportunities are where families live, neighborhood books with many libraries and barbershops and other locales that are led by community members and United for Literacy kits. And we've, increased, we've uh, expanded our community impact committee to ensure an even stronger community voice and a more inclusive lens on investments and the Patterson Foundation. What can we say? You've seen a lot of their overarching umbrella work that is incredible in our four county area. Leaders from the beginning and had the foresight to bring four counties together in this effort so that we reach our families who live, work, play, and learn in the footprint. And their leadership in a community-wide awareness and engagement efforts could not be replicated by any one of us. Their investment in a data person specifically in Manatee County and in other areas, I'm talking about Manatee County today, um, ensures that we are on track and can measure progress without placing an additional burden on our district. With all that said, we've also engaged neighborhood leadership and the Chamber of Commerce and the Education Foundation and our official Oyster Bar of the campaign, Anna Maria Oyster Bar, as well as other businesses and individuals. And since we recognize the power of education to create a more equitable future for our children, how will we shore up this foundation this systems level approach to ensure that our children thrive now and in the future. Where do we go from here? And on the next slide, I'll remind you of our target, increase by half the number of children on grade level by the time they leave third grade in 10 schools of focus by 2026. Our two original schools, Samoset and Palmview Elementary are still with us. And in the new year, when we get through some of the kinks of this pandemic, <laughs> we'll roll in an additional three. And we will continue to ensure a firm foundation of generational success by, on the next slide, um, ensuring tighter in and out of school connections, developing learning communities around specific topics that we want to address together and investing in community spaces along with our other areas of approach. So what can you do? I have four things, but you may have some things of your own. You can give, you can volunteer, you can advocate and you can lead. Any one or all of those four things are open to you right now and we have easy opportunities for you to engage. And remember to keep that mantra and keep it alive is that when we see something that we wanna get done, we won't give up and we won't give in. Please join the movement, onward. And now I'd like to introduce the amazing CEO of Manatee County Chamber of Commerce, Jackie Dazelski. So much and good morning to everyone. It is just fantastic to see the attendee list and to see so many familiar names from philanthropy, from government, from agencies and from the business community. I also see teachers that I know on that attendee list parents and neighbors. And so it's an honor to spend just a few minutes with you today to talk about some data resources that are available 
uh, to all of us. And so in just a moment, I'm going to share my screen um, to allow you all to see a new resource that has been stood up by the Florida Chamber of Commerce um, called the Gap Map. But before I do that, I want to applaud Beth and Bronwyn and everyone that's been engaged. Um, from the Manatee Chamber's perspective, Bronwyn has been on the agenda of our annual leadership retreat um, for several years where we've talked about the campaign for grade level reading and the critical importance that engagement within the business community will have in that. Um, we've also highlighted the big plan um, and helped share incredibly detailed data that has been available. It was a partnership with the county as well. Bronwyn, you mentioned that, but hats off to Sherry Corrier and her team at the county for the tremendous amount of data they have helped bring to bear um, on this issue. So with that, I will attempt to share my screen and hope that I don't um, do this in a way that doesn't work, but it looks like it should work smoothly. So. For those of you that are not aware of the Florida Gap Map, um, it again is a tool that has been stood up on the Florida Chamber of Commerce's website um, as a way for communities across this great state to work from a common set of data. Um, and so you'll find it at flchamber.com forward slash Florida Gap Map. Um, what you'll find when you visit that website is some introduction and some uh, perspective from business leaders across the state on why this is so important to the business community. Um, knowing that students in school now will be facing an ever-changing and ever more complex workforce um, situation in the future. And so we all know on this call that reading um, is the foundation of learning. And so this is absolutely an investment in our economy and in the prosperity of Floridians um, as well. You'll see some other links on this Florida Gap Map um, website to allow you to connect to other initiatives across the state, including the Business Alliance for Early Learning and the Florida's Prosperity, Florida Chamber's Prosperity Initiative. For those of you that weren't aware prior to COVID-19 to the pandemic, the Florida Chamber was bringing its annual uh, Prosperity Initiative Summit to Sarasota County. And so it was not too long ago, the end of last year in which the business community came together um, at the urging of the Patterson Foundation uh, to explore how we could highlight some of the amazing work that's going on here in our region at that statewide summit to be held in Sarasota. So. The summit didn't happen because it was scheduled for May, but I know that we are on the radar now uh, for the incredible Suncoast accomplish, accomplish, accomplishments that we've had um, through that meeting and several communications with the Florida Chamber. So as you scroll down the website, you'll find some tutorial videos that will help you uh, better utilize the map to dig down into local data. And I will show you an example uh, down here. So what you're able to do is of course, I'm refreshing. Uh, you'll fill, be able to filter by county. So we'll go to Manatee County. And if you click on the link, you're able to, on the left-hand side, find a toolbar in which you can zoom in um, and then hover. So we'll, we will move, oh, let me go out. And if you want to hover over the different maps, you will see based on zip code, what statistics are for, in this case, Manatee County. So you can highlight the 34209 zip code and see that as of the data collected by the Florida Chamber, 695 children are living in poverty in 34209. You can also then see the elementary schools that serve that zip code and what their third grade reading scores are. And as importantly, and Bron, when you've talked about this so much in introducing the big plan over the past few years, is the number of children that some of these percentage statistics um, represent because every child matters. And I think it's important that we put into context percentages into absolute numbers of how many of our community's children are impacted by these, uh, these numbers. You'll see 34208, more than a third of the children under 18 in 34208 in Manatee County are living in poverty. And so these should be rallying cries for our entire region and you all on the call know that they already are. So also you are able to 
um, hover over specific schools. So in this case, Ballard Elementary School, you can again see specific data by school set on those three, third grade reading scores. You'll also find additional data if you want to take a look at all elementary schools in Manatee County sorted um, alphabetically. You can see the kids not yet reading at grade level and their third grade reading scores. In addition to that, I wanted to show you um, one other website of the Florida Chambers, and that is their Florida Scorecard, um, which is foundational to the big picture about all of the economic and statistical indicators that can impact the prosperity opportunities for all Floridians. It's at thefloridascorecard.org, and here's what you'll find when you go to the Florida Scorecard. This right now are statewide metrics. They have COVID-19 information, um, but long-term big picture, there are a number of metrics in which the Florida Chamber is monitoring um, the health of Florida. You also are able to view county data. Need to move my little square here. Um, so again, in this case, if we wanna take a look at Manatee County, we are now able to see statistics for things like unemployment, housing, um, wealth migration, poverty, graduation rates, um, population and more. And so I encourage you all to take some time to explore these websites uh, to be able to take a look at metrics. And again, I think data driving all that what we do is something we've already um, heard for uh, since the start of the campaign for grade level reading. And I'm just uh, grateful for the opportunity to be on the call with all of the heroes uh, that are here, both as presenters and as attendees. Um, and stand, uh, stand to engage the business community at an even higher rate. So with that, Beth, I believe I turn it back over to you. Beautiful, thank you so much, Jackie. It's such a pleasure to have you with us um, today and what a tremendous tool uh, the Florida Gap Map is going to be for all of us um, moving forward. Um, the involvement of our business community is so important to the success of our children. And as we know, our children's success will mean our community's success. So thank you so much. We appreciate it. We've discovered an awful lot um, this year, particularly. Uh, we've discovered that many of our neighbors are longing for a greater sense of connectedness and that parents and grandparents and caregivers and educators are hungry for high quality information to assist them in helping our children. And we also know that time is the non-renewable resource. And so as much as we long for connectedness and we long for those high quality experiences, sometimes time is something that, that stands in the way of that. And so, the Suncoast campaign has put together a program we're calling Stronger Me, Stronger We, that will address all of those things. Stronger Me, Stronger We is a series of workshops and with many different topics. So you'll, you'll see this particular logo is Stronger Me, Stronger We, this book is cool. And we are offering two different uh, tracks for this. We have This Book is Cool for the Classroom, where we'll use some of the books that we featured in This Book is Cool to have lesson plans that align with Florida benchmarks and standards, an opportunity for the children in the classrooms to get the books and a family engagement activity that will happen with our classrooms. In addition to that, for families in our region, we have This Book is Cool available for them just in five one hour meetings where they and their children can come together. We will focus uh, the lessons on how we can use the books to increase literacy skills, do some fun activities with the children and give the families a way that they can participate together. Our next slide, Abby. We also have Stronger Me, Stronger We ready for the book, The Power of Presence, written by Joy Thomas Moore. Many of you participated in book circles over the past 18 months centered around this book. We found in the time of COVID that many parents have questions and can gain strength from 
talking to each other about their strategies and how they're dealing with different um, struggles and challenges they have. And Joy's book has given us a very strong framework to address many different concerns in the family. Stronger Me, Stronger We, The Power of Presence is five one-hour meetings. They'll happen virtually. There'll be facilitated discussions. And everyone who signs up to participate in Stronger Me, Stronger We, The Power of Presence will receive a copy of Joy's book. And the next slide. We also have structured some Mind in the Making workshops in the Stronger Me, Stronger We format, five one-hour meetings. These Mind in the Making meetings are really focused on the games and exercises that will help the adults understand the importance of executive function skills and how to share those skills with their children. We're really looking forward to um, facilitating these workshops. Not only uh, is the Patterson Foundation ready with some facilitators uh, for individuals who would like to take the class, but also we want to partner with organizations in Manatee County and, and our other counties and co-facilitate these workshops as a way to strengthen family and parent engagement for your organization, as well as to get them involved in the Suncoast campaign for grade level reading. We do have a stipend available for the organizations that would like to partner and co-present, and um, we'd be happy to talk to you about that. We do have a survey that we'll be sending out following this meeting. And in that survey, you'll be able to indicate if you'd like to receive more information about Stronger Me, Stronger We. We also have a new offering. Abby, the next slide. We have taken um, Vroom, which as many of you know, is a free app developed by the Bezos Family Foundation and how to foster executive function skills in infants through age five. And we've put together a Stronger Me, Stronger We series of workshops around that same topic, focusing on vroom and vrooming into literacy, but also taking some of the tips from Too Small to Fail and Talk, Read, Sing and Talk to Me Baby and putting those together in a format where parents can come together once a week for an hour learn uh, some of the research and, and some of the activities they can do with their child to build uh, their children's brains, but also connect with each other and learn from each other. We're very excited about these opportunities and are looking forward to promoting them throughout the region over the next several months. Each one of these Stronger Me, Stronger We opportunities are five one hour workshops featuring high quality content in a facilitated way so that we can make strong connections with the families, educators, and interested people in our community to really double down on our commitment to making sure our children get what they need in order to be successful. We also um, are going to be doing some pop-up neighbor through laundry events. We have four events scheduled um, coming up between November 7th and um, Christmas. And we will be doing these days in a little bit of a, a, a different way simply because of the pandemic. We have put social distancing measures in place. Everyone will be masked. We have hand sanitizer. We um, are not going to be having uh, a lot of people crowding an indoor um, laundromat. We have tents that will be set out, up outside. And we encourage you to participate if you are comfortable doing so. These pop-up neighbor events are a wonderful way for us to connect directly with families. And as we know, many families in our region are struggling right now. So the opportunity to have their laundry done for free is a, a gift that I'm pretty certain will be uh, accepted with great joy. And we will uh, give you the opportunity again in our after um, event survey, where if you're interested in receiving more information about our pop-up neighbor events, you'll be able to do so. Um, next slide, please. We also have another 
another opportunity that I just want to make you aware of. Uh, many of you uh, participated in February. We had a one act play um, called Abraham Lincoln and Frederick Douglass Walked to Respect. And because we've received so many um, comments and requests to bring this back, we did film the one act play. And on December 1st, we will be uh, doing a virtual showing of the play followed by a panel discussion about how these two very different men with very different views were able to forge a friendship and come together and influence each other and um, bridge what seemed to be an unbridgeable gap. And I think there are, are lessons there for all of us. We do have a few moments left today. And um, what I'd like to do, uh, Abby, you can um, certainly, uh, we are interested in you connecting with us, but Abby, you can uh, turn off the PowerPoint right now. And Bronwyn and I uh, are ready and willing to field any questions um, that you might have. You can put your questions into the Q&A box and we would be happy to answer them. And so far there are no questions, which is great, which means we've did a pretty good job of explaining the things that um, we were explaining. I know many of you saw that we have door prizes available um, for today, and I'm going to let you know a little bit about how we are accomplishing that. We do have um, a listing by time code on when everybody registered for uh, today's event. And we will have a list of the people who actually attended. So the first 35 people who registered and attended are going to uh, receive a door prize that we will be sending to your home or to your business, depending on which uh, is, is your preference. And uh, we look forward to um, sharing. I don't want to give away what the prize is, but I know that um, I liked it so much that I made sure we ordered a couple of extras so that we can get one too. Great, I don't see any questions coming in. So I do want to thank all of you for participating. If you do have a question, there will be an opportunity on the after event survey for you to put your question in and Bronwyn or myself will respond to you. This movement is successful because of each one of you and your commitment to the success of our children. We are grateful uh, we are gratified for the success that we've experienced so far, but we are determined to make sure that we are reaching more children and more families, and we will need each one of you to be able to do that. So thank you so much. Have a wonderful rest of your Wednesday. Until we meet again, bye.